All right, welcome back everyone. So I have quite a few favorites here. We're joined here with Ollie right over here. Before I get into it, I just wanna put in a quick word for my sponsor for this video, which is Zit Sticka. If you're unfamiliar with Zit Sticka, they make these patches for your pimples. And um, I have two different kinds here. This is the Killa, which is the one that I started using first. These are great because usually right before my period, I could feel underneath the skin, um, like Zit's starting to form. So this kind of attacks it right from the start. In this package, you get the wipes, which is great because usually whenever I do skincare, I never know when to put a patch on, if I keep it clear or do I um, moisturize and do my whole entire face routine. So what I do now is um, when it comes time to taking care of my skin, um, I'll do my whole facial routine and then wipe off the section that I need to target. And then I'll use one of these patches right on top these patches are transparent and there's micro needles that dissolve in your skin and then they release this um, medication. So you have to leave it on for a little over two hours. I usually just leave it on overnight and they're pretty transparent too. So you can wear it throughout the day and it's not like an obvious um, like patch. There's niacinamide and salicylic acid, which is great for um, attacking pimples from the start. Let's say you have a full on blemish and you wanna extract the juices and the goo from it. There's Goo Getter, which is fantastic for pulling out moisture from underneath the zit. So, I mean, it's called the Goo Getter, so pretty straightforward. Um, so this is more for surface level extraction, so it'll quickly flatten out your zit if you already have one that's like bubbling. As always, I'm gonna leave all the information in the down bar as well as the discount code, and let's move on to the rest of the favorites. So Maddie and I just got back from Mexico a couple weeks ago, and while we were there, I got a new tattoo. This is it right here. It's just a little butterfly. I think she did a really good job. I'll link all her information Oh, again, in the down bar if you guys are interested. I just put some ointment on this. I actually just got this ointment from OEM or OM. It's kind of like Aquaphor in a way, but it works a lot better and it sinks into the skin. And it's not just like a surface level. I mean, it really moisturizes on the surface level, but it kind of like penetrates within and keeps everything kind of hydrated and heals quickly. Maddie actually made a blog on our Mexico trip and it was very well done. I think I'm gonna try and go back in December. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, um, let's talk about some ceramic updates. Okay, so I made this boot right here. It's a little shot glass, like mod boot. This is meant to hold a shot or you can use it as an ice cream cone. I'm really excited for this. I'm gonna try and make more of these um, and maybe make them a little bit bigger too so you can hold a little bit more. This is a new boot that's coming out. It's just a white glossy boot. I haven't really done a white boot before, so yeah, I was just playing around with it. I actually added some detailing on the side right here, but <laughs> it got kind of lost during the, um, the glazing process. But yeah, I really like this white one. It's gonna be coming to the site. If not today, then um, maybe next month. This also holds about half a shot and obviously holds matches that you can strike underneath. And then I got a couple pieces that I want to talk about from other artists. I know I talk about Kelly Burnett all the time. Like I, I look up to her so much and I love the stuff that she makes. I just think everything that she makes is very timeless and it's something that I would be proud to have even 50 years from now and like something that I can pass down as an heirloom piece and stuff. I feel like those are the type of artists that I look up to, not just very like trendy, but timeless. So um, yeah, she made this cup and saucer set I have two, so um, yeah, I really like it. The saucer is so well done. The cup is so cute. And it was so funny because um, she was walking down the street from my house and then she just got these out of the kiln. Uh, and she was holding them and then she was like, hey, do you want these? Because we've been trading um, ceramics here and there. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And she's like, do you drink espresso? And I'm like, yeah, which I really haven't made espresso in these yet. I've been using it for like tea or um, to drink like mezcal and stuff. I think it's so cute. And the thing is, whenever something comes out of the kiln that is hers, I always know right away because of the way that it feels. Like I don't even have to flip it over and see her name underneath. I just can tell by how it feels, which is such a strange thing to say. But I think it's the way that she throws. I don't think she throws with a lot of water. So it's very even. And then also the way that she burnishes it, it's just so smooth. So it's matte on the outside, so there's no glaze on the outside. 
and then it's glazed on the inside surface. Another trade that I did, oh, that I'm doing is um, with another artist named Christopher Lear. And he just started, I think in September or October of last year. And he's been making the most beautiful, detailed, I mean, I think it's so stunning. So like, I follow a lot of um, ceramics on like Pinterest and stuff. And I follow a lot of like Japanese artists and stuff because I, I just really admire this um, craftsmanship and just the way that he made it is so delicate and you can tell that he put a lot of time into it. And this is meant to drink tea out of. Um, so you pour a little bit of tea, steep it, and then you pour like, I think you grab it like this and then it kind of sifts through. It holds back the tea leaves, sifts through, and then you pour it in here and then you have your tea. It's just so precious to me and it's so delicate and very well done. So when I was in Mexico, I got food poisoning and I was out for a couple days. And during that time, I um, caught up on some movies and um, I watched Roma with my cousin when it first came out. I thought it was beautiful, but I didn't really remember much of it. But when I was in Mexico City, um, just like walking around and everything, I'm like, you know what, I need to watch that again. So when I got food poisoning, I was just like stuck inside. <laughs> then I watched the movie fully, paid attention to it. And um, yeah, it is very well done. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. It follows this woman, Cleo, who is a nanny to this family and um, kind of just like follows her life. And it's very well done. And I cried so much during the movie. I don't think I cried the first time I watched it, but the second time I watched it, I'm like, wow, this is so well done. And I think I was also very emotional at the time too. So um, yeah, definitely recommend watching that. And if you're gonna go to Mexico City, um, yeah, let yourself get enveloped by the movie and everything. Just like watch it. If you have seen it, let me know your thoughts because I would really like to know. In terms of music, I made a playlist for Worldwide FM. And the first song that was on that playlist is called Calling England Home. It's by a poet musician named Anthony Joseph. And I discovered that song through, I mean, I talk about this all the time, but Mild Animals. It's my friend Phil Nisco and Free the Robots. They put out a playlist. Well, they used to put out a playlist every month, but they kind of stopped. Anyway, I was listening to Phil's part of the playlist or set. I've listened to that set like so many times and that song just like really caught me. Yeah, and then I knew that I had to use that song as the first song of my set list because it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the hour. I think it's considered expressive jazz. Um, if you like Gil Scott Heron, then I think you might like this guy. My friend Greta was making a lot of tile pieces and she made this beautiful chessboard. I think it was around the time that Queen's Gambit came out, so it got a lot of exposure and it was wonderful and everything. And then um, she has a YouTube now and she was talking about how she wants to recycle or use the leftover pieces um, of other projects. So she has a lot of tiles and a lot of like wood pieces and she wanted to kind of use all the scraps and stuff. And then she was able to do it in such an artistic way, like using um, different color combinations that work. So I asked if she can make uh, like a chess board or chess table out of um, recycled pieces. And then um, she designed this chess board, which I really like because the table that she makes, it's wonderful and everything, but um, like I wanna be able to bring it out to the front yard and bring it back into my living room, put it on my coffee table and just move it around. Um, so yeah, she made this stunning chessboard. Um, she made it quite a few actually and I picked out this green one. I'm just so excited about it. But this is what it looks like. The board itself is hollow so that whenever you move your chess pieces around you can kind of hear it kind of click. So I love that tactile feedback. Um, it just sounds really cool. Feels a lot more like powerful in a way. Um, and the size is perfect and I have like the double weighted um, like tournament set so it fits perfectly with the pieces that I already have. Just love the color combination that I got and I love that it's so easy to clean. You can just clean it with Windex or glass cleaner. Um, oh, and another cool thing is that even if you don't play chess, you can use it as like a cheese board or like a countertop or like a display. Um, yeah, I'm just really into it. If you aren't already watching Greta on YouTube, Sarah the Mailman's right here, so I don't want to be missing you, Doc. Hi, Sammy. Yeah, if you don't already follow Greta on YouTube, definitely check out her channel because it feels like old YouTube to me, like talking to a friend or a cousin or a sister or something like that. Um, it's not overly produced. She does these vlogs that are 
really sweet and wholesome and inspiring to like get out there and do things with your day and um, make things with your hands and stuff. Um, yeah, so check out her channel. Last thing that I want to talk about are my favorite shoes at the moment. So I just got these boots from Ranch Road. Oh my god, I just love them. I think they're so well made and um, they broke in really easily. So the first day that I wore it, it was a little bit tight, but I think it's meant to be kind of tight. And then afterwards it kind of um, forms your foot. There's like a cork insole. So these are super comfy now. And I like that they're a little bit more loose around this part right here so I can slip in and out of it pretty easily. My other pair was kind of um, fitted right here. So you really had to like pull them on and take them off and everything. And um, yeah, these are just so much more comfy than my other cowboy boots. Those are all the favorites for the month of May. Thank you again, Zit Sticker, for sponsoring this video. And I'll leave all the information for everything in the down bar. If you guys have any questions, comments, or whatever, please leave a message. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.